Good morning. My name is Sabine. I'm from Bonaire. And um, I will talk a little bit about science-based uh, management of a project. And um, we are at a university, but still I'm curious. Who in the audience works only in science? Only science. Who in the audience has a project that has science in it? That's more. And who in the audience does, doesn't do anything with science? Was that somebody or nobody? No. Okay, so that I think science is important for all of us. And um, so this is a title. Um, actually, it's Jessica and me that give this presentation, but I'll be here in front and she can answer questions later as well. Um, okay. So we have knowledge and we have science. When we start a project, most people have knowledge about an area. It's what everybody knows, which can read up what's not in peer-reviewed uh, journals. But often we also want science because it's so important. We want to know the threats. We want to do tests. We want to see if the threats, uh, how we can solve the threats and if it really works. So that's where science comes in. So each project is different. You have different components. You have a community involvement. You have governance. You have different aspects. So not each project is the same. For instance, you, you can have a project where uh, if you take glue as community involvement, that it's mostly about community involvement, and you take orange as science, that science is just a small part, part of it. But you also have um, projects where it's equal, that there is uh, different. Like um, yesterday we had an interactive session with uh, Jessica and she asked us, can you think back how important the different components in your own project are? And it's sometimes really eye-opening to see how it, how it differs. And then maybe afterwards you can realize, hey, maybe I should invest a little bit more in science or in um, community involvement. And that goes for time-wise, capacity, and uh, budget. So why science? I already told you it's important to know the threats, to not to think, oh, everybody says it's because of this. No, you have to test it to see. Otherwise, you come up with solutions that won't work. You have, when you have the solution, you have to test it to see if it works. It's monitoring, but you also can do a pilot where you really test everything. And lastly, it's a base for the management. Without it, you would I won't say you would be lost, but it's still, it's very important. I have two, imp um, two examples you can have. Science is not only about your re reforestation or your um, uh, restoration. It can also be social sciences where you have to know your community. You develop a communication plan, but you have to know who's your audience, what is your target audience. You have to have a goal with your communication plan, not like, uh, okay, I send a, out a number of posts, but you have to reach something. What often happens also with us is like, um, we have an event and we reach a lot of people, and mostly the people who are like-minded come to the events and listen to us, but sometimes it's way more important to reach the people who think differently, like reach the politicians. So you have to really invest time to know with your audiences. The same goes for reforestation. You can't just go out and plant. You have to know the conditions. You have to go. You have to know how far apart. You have to know why you are restoring. Is the, did the conditions change or is there another threat? Like on Bonaire, overgrazing, overgrazing is a real um, issue. But by the overgrazing, you also have erosion, so the soil structure changes, and you can't just go back to before. You have to study to see what's the cause. And science helps you 
and it helps you to run a project and have a better success. It gives you support. It's, it lends credibility to a project. If you send in a proposal and you can support it with science, it's better. And also the funders like this a lot more when you put science in your proposal so they can see, oh, they come up with a solution and the solution has been tested or they come with a solution and they plan to test it to see if it will work. So you build up your project, you have the knowledge when you start, but then you have to uh, go out, do ground routing, you have satellite images, you have to know if it, what is really there, and then you build it on with real science, with the testing, and the research and monitoring. So we work in Bonaire, it's a small island in the Caribbean, just north of the coast of Venezuela, and we work in a bay, which is surrounded with mangroves. So we stretch from the sea, but also from the backland. So we have to take the study of the catchment area into consideration, because a lot of the threats come from the backlands. So we started out with the local community. They had a lot of knowledge and they show, said, okay, this is where we in the past could uh, go to another lagoon. This was open in the past and uh, here is where we saw regular fish die off. And they also know the conditions of the water because when you go there, they say, hey, this used to be that and now there's fish. So the local knowledge is a good starting point. But then you want to know more. You have to have baseline data. And um, maybe some people say, yeah, but we live in a remote area or we don't have the facilities, we don't have the capacity, we don't have a university nearby. So that in that case, it's important to, to build your networks. But sometimes there are very simple solutions and you don't need a lot of material. Like there are uh, some examples here. In the top uh, picture, this one, what you see here, do you know what it is? Anybody an idea what this is? No, it's a very thing. I think uh, maybe you had it for breakfast, it's an orange. And we can use it to gather data. What we do is we use it to me measure the flow of water. We throw it in the water and we measure with the stopwatch, the distance. So it's very easy and it gives data. And it's very simple, but you can also give it a, a fancy name. So we call it the Orange Protocol, and it works, and everybody can do it and can work with it. There are also simple um, instruments that you can buy that are not very uh, expensive. So we are using a, a hobo sensors that send them, they measure light and um, temperature. For instance, we had a, a small lagoon where it was very hot and we wanted to know whether this was because the sun was always uh, standing there and um, that, that by uh, nighttime it would cool off, but then we noticed that the temperature near the bottom was hot day around and we found, we guess we know what it is. And also a simple um, uh, tool for research and monitoring is just a plain ruler, so you don't need very fancy equipment, though very fancy equipment is very nice to have. What we do when we can't um, afford to do the research ourselves, we build networks and we invite colleagues to come over and they have all the nice uh, instruments and can do the work for us. So we had a technical university come down with all the nice instruments and they could model the flow in the whole system for us. So they could say, oh, this creek is ab-dominated, this one is uh, flood-dominated, and um, by building a model, they could tell us that widening the creeks didn't ha wouldn't help that much, but they said, if you start opening a channel in the middle, that will help uh, resolve the, um, the problems, and that will be very effective. But we didn't have the instruments they had, they came in and did it for us. Another um, area where we 
had a lot of, uh, uh, prof uh, we profited a lot from a university that had analyzed, analyzed uh, satellite images and they showed us in which area was the most uh, degradation, which actually was here. And that was something we saw, but they could really, by analyzing the satellite imager, say, it happens here, it happens at this rate, so the loss will be this much in this time. And it uh, confirms also our, um, our thoughts that the threats, from which area the threats were coming, so we know in which area we have to do interventions. Another study that we couldn't afford ourselves is um, a study on carbon fluxes. So we had the university, they came down with all the heavy equipment and they did uh, all the research for us and um, published in a peer-reviewed um, journal. Ah. So it's very popular to come down to Bonaire because a lot of students like it, um, but we want to be... Y ahora las personas que llegan aquí pueden ser algo por nosotros. Es beneficial for us and that we have somebody at the university that can support them at the science side. So we have a website with a wish list, as we call it, and we have put a number of topics. So if somebody is interested to come down, we can tell them, yeah, we need to know, to know more about uh, blue carbon or about uh, coastal defense or bioturbation or we wouldn't want to know more about um, whatever there is and then we can discuss, start discussing how we go, uh, um, how we progress. So the options are for science are, if you don't have anything you can say, okay, we leave it out. But I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think many people do that. Um, and really, you have to look at the knowledge that is available at the addition of knowledge and then combine it with the science. Um, I just was at the summit in the Netherlands and we had the scientists not really opposed but against the indigenous knowledge and the scientists said, uh, yeah, but you need a peer reviewed uh, research and you have to publish it so you can't go with indigenous knowledge. And the indigenous people said, uh, okay, but we have knowledge for ages and you're only over one year. And look where it got you. Can you, with your science, help climate change? So and they, uh, the scientists were a little bit like, okay, we have to do something different. Um, for us, we connect a lot with university, but we also, and that's mostly in Europe, sometimes in the States, but we would like to reach out more in this region, work more with the people here in the region. That's why we want to have uh, regional collaborations. It's the reason also why we wanted to start this network. And um, before you, not to forget, there is citizen science and there's a lot of things that you can't do where you don't need difficult um, instruments where you can set up protocols. There are a lot of apps and I also, I already mentioned the orange protocol, but there are different um, other things that you can do. And I think I'm within the 10 minutes. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Jessica and the mangrove maniacs that do everything.